I've been obsessed by one word for this entire week. And uh, I thought I would talk about it today, even though I don't know what to say about it. So this is more an exploration than anything else. Um, the word is entropy. And there's thermodynamic, thermodynamic explanations for it in physics, in physics that I can't really address. I can talk about it in the most simplistic terms, which would be sort of things fall apart. Or as Bob Dylan put it, those who aren't busy being born are busy dying. And Rudy had a rather interesting image that goes along with all this. He really talked about life as a skyscraper that he was building, reaching higher and higher and higher. And he very specifically put a stick of dynamite in every floor. So when the time came and he was at the very top and it was all over, he blew it up. Ultimately, we're all caught between these polarities of wanting to build a life and life wanting to tear us down. And we're there every day, every single day. We're all trying to build something, in a sense, out of nothing. And in the end, we all return to nothing. So, a big question comes up, why? Why do we do this? Why do we spend so much time, energy, effort, building something that cannot last, that will be, in one way or another, dissolved? The something that we manifest will become what it has always been again, nothing. One of the interesting components of this somethingness that we are is how terrified it is of nothingness, the very thing that we come from. Bless you. The very thing that we are horrifies us. We love to become enthralled with the somethingness that we are, that we become. One of the things that's quite obvious is that the building forces of our life, the constructive creative forces of our life, are really powerful. They have an ongoing dynamism that is operating from the first cry when you come out of the womb. It's pretty. I'm here. I'm here. And then you watch a child striving to accomplish, to do, to do everything, to reach the thing in the crib that's hanging over them. You know, the hand doesn't even know what to do. It's just going all over the place. And then, oh, it gets it. It doesn't know how it got it. And then it, keeps working and working and working it, and it figures it out, and it can pull it, and it can make it squeak, and it can do all these wonderful, wonderful, amazing things. And you go, as a child, you go, wow. And it's just the beginning. I mean, making a toy squeak and building a skyscraper, it's that journey. How do we go from one to the other? What is that enormous drive that we all have essentially to be? can be translated also to become or to do. These are forces that are so dynamic in all of us and at the same time that we are working toward all of that, we are already being obstructed in the journey. Obstruction is matter itself, gravity, 
self-image. Sense of self. All of these things start to evolve with us. And so while we are building up, there are all these voices going, no, you can't. You're not good enough. It won't happen. Don't even try. So there we are with this unquenchable desire to achieve and accomplish and all these voices going, uh-uh, uh-uh. Nothing makes it easy. Nothing makes it easy. So that's the human conundrum. In a certain sense, you are blessed with or cursed with this enormous need to be. And your dreams, your thought patterns, your projections often far outreach your capacity. And what do you do about that? You know, you want to be a scientist, let's say, and <clears throat> you can't do basic math. There's problems. Your mind isn't working properly. You have ADD, let's say. You can't focus. You can't do the things you need to do to get to where you want to go to. Life has set this challenge in front of you. And you can do one of two things. You can go, you know, your science teacher or your counselor says, you know, you really should give up on that. You really don't have the capacity to do that. And you go, oh, really? Okay, I'll give up. Or you go, I'm not giving up at all. I want this thing in my life, and I'm going all out to get it. So what do we celebrate in stories of people? Do we celebrate the guy who goes, okay, I can't do it? When was the last movie you saw about that? It's somebody who wants something in spite of all of their limitations, who wants something really badly, who has this unbelievable force in them moving towards something against all odds. And when they get there, when they get there, that's your climax, that's the movie, that's the, wow. They did it. If they did it, I can do it. There's this joy of accomplishment. There's this joy of arriving at something hard won. We really do celebrate it in life. And then you get there, and what happens? Nothing supports it. It starts to already be dissolving. You get the thing you want, and you have to keep working to keep it going. And then it's somehow not enough. People think, well, okay, you got that, now what? And you have to push further and harder. It's kind of never-ending on some level. Yes, it's great if you win the Nobel Prize. You can kind of put that on your tombstone and go, he won the Nobel Prize. But what do you do for 40 years after you've won it? What do you do, walk around carrying a little sign saying, I won the Nobel Prize? Do you think anybody really cares? Really? You know, you don't care because you need to do something more because life doesn't stop. The demand doesn't stop. But what does stop? Your body. It really has this, you know, this arc. And there comes a point where you're really young and youthful and energized and everything is there for you. And the thing that obstructs you at that point is your teacher saying you're not good enough, your best friend saying, yeah, I think you should settle for this or whatever, and all the things telling you no, and you work against that, and you maybe get to where you want to go, and then boom, 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 boom. 
the body starts falling apart underneath you. Your mind starts to go. The world is no longer the energetic world that you were able to occupy before. You're now diminished. And that's not a good feeling because you so want, you so want to sustain, you so want to be perceived as this vital force and your force is no longer vital. And it feels unnatural, but the fact is it's the most natural thing there is. The leaf buds, it comes out on the tree, it hangs there, it turns green, it brings in photosynthesis from the from the sun, it converts it into energy, the tree grows stronger, the water comes up, then the leaf, it's fall comes and the leaf starts decaying, turning brown. It actually looks very beautiful for a bit. And then it gets kind of crispy and tight and old and its ability to hang on to that tree gets less and less likely. And it's, if it had a personality, it would be going, oh my God, 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 what am I going to do, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? You're not going to do anything. You're going to fall off the tree. Every one of us is falling off the tree. That's what happens. And every one of us is saying, I'm not ready. Or why me? Why am I falling off the tree? Because every other leaf is falling off the tree. And you're making room for more leaves to come later. But you're going, but I have the most beautiful leaf that ever existed. I won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> you know, I am, what, I am what life was about. And then it's taking you just like everybody else. Where, where is your joy in this? Where is your satisfaction? Where, where is your enlightenment? Well, something came to me in class today. It was a very simple line, but it's quite beautiful. Nothing does not fear nothing. Only something fears nothing. Something that does not want to become nothing is terrified. Once you understand who you are, what you are, you will realize that you arrived out of nothing, that even in all of this unbelievable journey of life, of life force, you are still at the very heart of you, at the very core of your being, nothing. The journey into something is a temporary explosion of fireworks in the sky and it goes back to nothing. The mere fact that you became something is probably the core miracle of existence, the core miracle of all there is. How did you become this? How? There's no answer. There is no answer. Science will tell us probably that out of this Big Bang which came out of nothing, this whole universe formed for what? For you. To give you this one explosion into somethingness, into manifestation. You have arrived at this moment. And here you are sitting in the midst of what is probably the greatest miracle of creation. And what are you doing and thinking? What, what, is, your, what is your core goal at this point? <coughs> To get a paycheck on Friday? To watch Homeland tonight? Um, <laughs> uh, truly, what, what, is it, what is it that drives you through this miraculous experience? Mostly it's deeply, deeply mundane. It's very small. It's very self-absorbed. It knows very little. And it really is not celebrating itself. It's just going, oh God, I got a toothache, I got to go to the dentist, I got to do a crown, I want a root canal. I, oh, you know, this is how we live. This is how we live. And life is more than that. And occasionally you get a great adventure. Occasionally you are motivated into doing something bigger than yourself. Occasionally you go, I want more than this. 
One way to begin to appreciate who you are is put yourself in a completely different situation. Get on a plane and go to, you can name it, Soviet Union. Not so different for everybody, but for most of us, that would be a big deal. Soviet, well, you can't go to the Soviet Union because it's gone, but go to Russia. Where, where can you go that you will look at yourself from a completely different perspective? That's the value of travel. The value of going somewhere else is that you can't look at yourself through familiar lenses. And you get to see yourself as a different person. And that can be very edifying and very beautiful and very awakening. Bring a child into the world. Have a relationship. Go back to school. I mean, the list is up forever. What are the things I can do to know myself differently? To see myself from an angle that I haven't perceived before that will help me to begin to see that I'm not who I thought I was or who I told myself I was. I'm not that. Or I am that plus. The important thing to understand is that huge energy that birthed you, that brought you into this explosive realm of being, hasn't gone anywhere. It actually is sustaining you every second. And you can turn the heat up. You can reignite your life. You can become more than you are. You can sit at home at night and write a novel. Or a screenplay. You can paint a painting. You can learn how to scuba dive. I mean, look, don't give up on your life because your mind tells you what your teachers told you, or your parents told you, or your friends told you. Don't give up on what you are. The whole idea of a spiritual life is twofold. One, it is to have the most miraculously fully evolved life you can get, and to prepare yourself for the truth that that life, as miraculous as it is, is temporal, short-lived, and ultimately grounded in entropy. It returns to nothingness, or they say sometimes in the dictionary, into chaos. Nobody likes the idea of chaos. How can we possibly go back to chaos? Well, in a certain sense, our life is chaos, but it has so much seeming order to it that we don't perceive the chaos. But in the same way that nothing doesn't fear nothing, nothingness doesn't fear nothingness, chaos doesn't fear chaos. Chaos is something reacting to this thing. But when you're this thing, there's no reaction to it. You're just it. There's no other. You're just that. And it's what we are. We are this extraordinarily <laughs> unknown, chaotic, moment-to-moment -moment changeable thing. We are relatively unpredictable, although we don't know that. We really have no idea at any given second what thought's going to shoot through our head and take us on a huge journey into, I call it the, you know, the train of consciousness. Phew, suddenly you catch the train that's going off to outer Siberia. And there you are in outer Siberia. Something just caught you and took you out there, and now you're, how did you get there? And then you have to work your way back to, I don't have to engage that thought. I don't have to engage that drama. I don't have to engage the thing that just shot through my head or emerged from my emotions or caught me in the back of my neck. You don't have to engage that. You can, it's there, but you can find a way of living with all of this manifestation that keeps going on and living in spite of that manifestation if you have a real drive. So what's the most important drive in life? I will tell you, I think it is the thing we do at the core of this class, which is you express a wish to surrender. The wish to surrender, to let go of trying to drive this ship and allow it to be driven. And the extraordinary thing you discover when you let go of the fact that you think you're in charge and you watch what comes, much more comes than you can possibly engineer into being. 
Stuff arises. It comes from outside. It comes from inside. Life force is always operating. <clears throat> and if you surrender, it comes to you and you are lifted up by it. You are inspired by it. You are driven by it. And you engage it and you serve it. True surrender is serving life force without being an entity that says, oh no, I can't do that, no, that's not possible, no, they said I'm not smart enough for that, or I'm not this or those things. All of those obstructions to life force get in the way. What's the thing we surrender in this class? When you say, please help me to surrender, you're surrendering you. You're the problem. You have been the problem for a long time. Not that you're <laughs> guilty of that, because it's not your fault. You are built to be a problem <laughs> to yourself, really. Everything, all of the, everyone you knew growing up has helped you build yourself as a problem. What you're trying to do is surrender that narrative story that tells you you're this thing or you're that thing, this problem or that problem, and just be who you are without that. And when you surrender and you're just this other thing, what is that other thing? It's called life force, your life. You're this driving, powerful energy that can do pretty much anything. And if you really let go, you're also imbued by this thing called presence. Life has a presence. It is such an extraordinary thing. We don't see it the same way fish don't see water and people don't see air. It's just all around us all the time, and we are immersed in it, we live in it, we breathe it, we are it. We are that presence. That presence is everything around you. Everything. It's the carpet on the floor, the ceiling, the sun out the window, the sky. It's all present. And it's what you are. And when you surrender, you surrender this little itty bitty conundrum of you to just being that. And what you realize is that little conundrum of you is not a bad thing. It's not the wrong thing. It's actually part of the whole. It's part of what is. So instead of fighting it and trying to chop it into pieces and throwing it overboard, you just go, oh, it's just part of the presence. And suddenly, this thing which is causing you grief and, and obstruction just becomes one with all there is. And then there's no obstruction. It's just how it works. You're just one with all of it. That lesson, that true act of surrender, allows you to have a life and to be life, to be present in life. And that's what we want. We don't want to miss this. And that's really what happens for most people. You get to the end of your life and you go, I missed it all. I missed it all because I was so frightened, because I was so caught up in this limitation that I have put on myself with my own story. And that's how all of us live. And then you finally go, if I had known earlier, I would have lived differently. Well, this is earlier. Do it. Do it. Wake up now to the fact that you are a miraculous creature, alive in the world. And if you can actually practice this thing of sitting still and surrender, you will be amazed at what will be dropped at your doorstep. The instructions of what to do with your life. They won't necessarily be what you want to hear because they'll always involve work and creativity and effort and a lot of people would rather watch TV, honestly, and they're given that opportunity. Everybody's given the opportunity to sit home all day, all night and watch TV. It's okay. You know, you're still alive, you know, you're still consuming life, you're still supporting the system in a way. But what is possible in you is so remarkable, so extraordinary that if you let go and you surrender, the possibilities arise. They really arise. And it's so beautiful. And all you have to do then is say yes. Just say yes to what life brings. Get out of this no thing. Just go yes. You don't know what it will do. It may bring you riches and fame. It may bring you, you know, a happy afternoon in the park. It may, who knows what it will bring you. But whatever it brings you, it will be probably better than watching TV. Probably. And if it doesn't bring you anything but watching TV, you will have a great time watching TV. You will actually earn the right to sit back and veg and love it. 
It's all okay. But I'm telling you, the possibilities of life growing into something are enormous until it starts to turn around and then it starts to become this other thing which is leading you into chaos or nothingness. And if you are fighting that, I mean it's okay to fight that to a point, but there comes a point where you realize, I cannot fight this anymore. I am dissolving. I am being led back to my source, to my true nature, and I want to be gracious about that. It's a very powerful journey. And so many people are fighting the whole dissolution part that they don't leave this world at peace with this world. They don't leave this world with a sense of joy of having been here. They just feel betrayed by something which has been told to us from day one. You're going to leave. It's over. It's going to be over. And one of the extraordinary things about really deep surrender, about really touching presence, nothingness, if you will, is you get this feeling, this awareness, that this nothingness from which you spring has always been there. It has always been present. It has an infinite eternal aspect. And the thing you are returning to is infinite and eternal you. That's the promise. It won't be the you that manifested. It will be the nothingness from which you came returning to itself. You return to who you are, and you will always be thus. That's the ride. If you live it organically, you will do this extraordinary thing, which is you will become present while you're here. If you live it organically, you will be present now. And then you will stay present. And when you leave the world, Presence will always be there, even when there's no more you, as you know yourself. That's the ride. Entropy is not a bad thing. Entropy is nature at work. Entropy is nothing becoming something, becoming nothing again. And if you know somewhere along that journey that you have always been nothing, the whole experience of that somethingness will be changed. It will be amazing. And it will be amazing, not that you get everything you dreamed of, but those dreams are important. It will be amazing because, and I've used this example a million times before, you'll get to taste ice cream, strawberry ice cream. You will get to taste it through this manifestation. And there's a lot of other stuff you're going to taste and experience as well. You know, extraordinary stuff. Go for it. Go for it. Be open to it. And if it doesn't come, if it doesn't come, take the stuff that comes. You know, if, you're not going to get it all. Trust me. Everyone's going to walk around going, but why didn't I have this? That's the thing I wanted the most. Well, because not everybody gets everything. You don't get everything. <clears throat> can you still have a great ride? Yes. Not getting can be as beautiful as getting. But if you get addicted to this idea of, I haven't gotten, or I'm a victim, and life didn't give me, that's a terrible ride. It's the worst manifested ride there is. I didn't get what I wanted. I didn't get anything. I was, life hated me, or <laughs> whatever that journey may turn into. If you turn yourself over to that, it's because you wanted it, because you love to suffer, because suffering has become, you know, your definition of being. And okay, I mean, why not have that? But I'm telling you, there are other choices, and they're wonderful. So, <laughs> Rudy would always say, on a bad day, you know, run out and have, a, have an ice cream soda. That's always what he said. Because he knew a lot of stuff doesn't come, a lot of stuff disappoints, a lot of things in life turn out to be what they want to be, not what you want them to be. But you can always pretty much get an ice cream soda. So enjoy the life you get.
enjoy the pieces of the life you get, enjoy the elements and the people around you. I'm telling you, <laughs> I sit with you guys here, sometimes a one-on-one, -on -one, and I feel I am in the presence of God. That's exactly what I feel. I look at you, each one of you, and I see God's face. I feel so lucky to know you. I feel so blessed to know you. Even if you don't know who you are, I do. And one day, you will know who you are. And every moment of life is a blessing. Every moment is a gift. And if you figure that out, you will leave this world with this unbelievable sense of it was worth it. Because you know it's going to be hard, but it's worth it. So don't be afraid of entropy. Don't be afraid of nothingness. Don't be afraid of chaos. You are nothing. You are chaos. And you are life itself. Any questions? I can see half of you when I, when I said, you're not going to get everything you want. You went, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you know? And, and I know what that feels like, because, you know, we're all in that same boat. And I don't care how much you get, you never get all the things you want. You know, it's just the way it is. Sorry about that. But you've got to own that. You have to own that. Somewhere along the line, make peace with not getting. Make peace with not getting. It's okay. What you get is amazing. It's not a question, but a comment I heard Paul McCartney in an interview just fairly recently because he had a new album out. And he was asked, why? You know, you've got it. You're Sir McCartney, you're this, you're that. He said, if I stop producing, if I stop exploring, then I'm dead. He said, I need to continue. He said, every achievement that I make is complete and then moves, and I have to move on to achieve something. Yeah, it's exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. I mean, you know, I, I had announced my retirement <laughs> um, last year to myself and to everybody around me and <laughs> really thought that that's what would happen. And then my life just turned into this crazy upheaval of movement and change and transformation and suddenly all these people are coming after me to do work that would never have come after me had I not been retired. <laughs> you know, it's when I gave up everything that suddenly everybody wanted me to do stuff, more than I can ever possibly do and maybe that's not even true because suddenly maybe I have the ability to do everything. I, I won't know until I try. So it's been a really interesting experience and uh, and my instinct, honestly, is to say no to everything. And the voice in me that's been studying for all these years just goes yes, over and over and over. Because what do you gain by saying no? Absolutely nothing. What do you gain by saying yes? We'll find out. Yeah. You know, that's what life is. Yeah. Anybody else? But, well, if you say no, but there's, if there are a lot of things coming at you, isn't there a moment of discernment of uh, if you feel, if you open yourself up and you say, I'm in service, I, I want, I, I'm, I'm available, I'm available, and then things come at you and maybe there are people that you may be better served not to be involved with. Sure, I mean, that choice comes up. Yeah, I mean, yes, if there's a choice between a yes, between a yes and a no, or several things happening, you can't say, you can't necessarily have both at the same time, so you do have to discern. And discernment really comes from a very deep place if you're lucky. It doesn't just become a mental event. It's discerning, something comes up inside you and just goes, there. And you just do it. You just know the right thing to do. It just arises inside you. Or something, when you have to make a decision between two things, the thing that tells you the thing not to do makes itself very clear. It's just, oh, that's, of course I don't do that one. It's, I mean, you can make this an intellectual game kind of thing, but, but mostly the openness to the yes makes it possible for you to have a choice to say no. Okay. Okie doke, what's today? We have two more classes. With, I mean, I'll be here for two more classes. And, uh, and then uh, 
we have all these wonderful teachers who will be here for more classes, and this will all continue. I mean, I love the fact that we have this house and we can leave it open, and anybody who wants to come here on a Sunday and sit in presence has an opportunity to do that. It's, you know, in truth, you could go anywhere to do it, but it, it takes... It take a little bug? A little bug? Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, this, this is a place of presence. It's a place to come and sit. That announces what it's about. You can do the same thing in the library. You can do the same thing on a bus. You can do the same thing in your backyard. Presence is not about a place. But if you haven't figured that out, you can come here until you can identify what presence feels like, what, it, what the quality of it is, why it's so pervasive, and then you can begin to identify it everywhere else, and then you don't have to come here anymore. Unless you just want the community of presence, which is an amazing gift to have. Because when you sit everywhere else, not everybody else is being present. So it, can, it, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. You can Really, I used to sit on the subway in New York and experience this presence, and I loved every person on the subway. I couldn't maintain eye contact because they would have killed me, but, 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 I, but I really felt I am in love with everybody in this space. And, uh, you know, you can live that way. You really can live that way if you want to. Anyway, enough talk. Thank you, guys. Uh, see you soon.